Hi, I'm Bob, Kilo Charlie 7, Golf Tango, Quebec. Welcome to Get Your Comms Up, where we give you the tools to communicate when no one else can. Your cell phone's down. Now what? That's exactly the position that a lot of us were in Wednesday night. Verizon had an outage that went from Seattle all the way to the Idaho Panhandle. It lasted for about two hours. So what do you do? This is why it's important to have a backup plan. For me, I turned on my radio to the local sheriff's department frequency and actually heard dispatch tell uh, the deputies that Verizon was having a, a region-wide outage. That allowed me to know that it wasn't my equipment, it wasn't my cell phone, uh, it was not on my end, it was you know out on Verizon's end. I also turned on the local ham repeater. That allowed me to make an emergency call if I needed one for help. I don't have a home cell, a uh, home landline, or a home internet. Uh, we rely on our our cell system pretty much for everything here, and I use ham radio as my alternative means of communication. I talked to a few of you who had issues trying to do that with the Channel Three project. You got on your Channel Three MERS, and made a call and couldn't get anybody. That is one of the reasons we're stressing, get your ham license. It gives you a much wider variety of resources to tap into. Channel 3 Project's awesome, and I highly recommend it, but part of making that work is getting with your neighborhood, your neighbors, your friends that live in the area, and your family members. They need to be within a mile to maybe two miles maximum from your house. The radios don't go real far when they're trying to travel through the neighborhood. Um, if you're going up to a repeater that's on a mountaintop, your signal gets above the houses, it goes a lot farther in free air. One of the problems we have with our radios is when you're in a town and you're trying to go through buildings, they don't go that far. It, it's, it, uh, the buildings, the concrete, the steel, all the, the structures, it, what's called attenuate the signal and they really, they basically block it. So it's one of those things that getting a ham license so you can make use of the repeaters, you can make use of higher power and bigger antennas, it really helps with uh, your comms and what you can do. All right guys, so radios. A lot of you guys are familiar with these. These are what I could call a bubble pack radio. You can buy some of these at like Walmart, Bimart, your local stores. They'll carry these generally in a two pack of the same style. Um, and they're good. These, these are real popular. Um, like this one here is a family radio service. A lot of you guys are probably familiar with these. They're great radios. Don't get rid of them. Um, but I highly recommend upgrading. If you want reliable communications that has better, better performance than these, um, everybody's familiar. These don't go real far. They're also pretty limited on what they can do. But these are a great radio throw at your neighbor next door if he doesn't have a radio in an emergency. And that way at least you guys can talk without having to actually physically go over to his house. Uh, this is another style of radio, still does FRS. This one actually is a dual radio. It does FRS and GMRS. Now, the differences in those, we're gonna talk about radio services and licensing requirements in another video. Know that some of these things we're talking about do require a FCC issued radio license to transmit on. So be aware if you transmit in the wrong spot without you know knowing what you're doing, if you don't have the right licenses, you can get yourself in trouble. We don't want anybody breaking the law or getting in trouble. So please uh, know where you're, what you're doing and where, where you're transmitting, that's really important. These radios generally would go a little bit farther than these. Part of that is these are allowed a higher power um, in certain areas on the radio spectrum. Um, and they're, they're a pretty decent radio. Again, that's a good one to throw at your neighbor when he doesn't have um, a radio for grid down. These are pretty much the ambiguous prepper radio anymore. Um, they're, they're really prevalent. They're very common. And part of the reason is the cost. These are a great value radio. They're not an excellent radio, but for the money with what you get with these, these are a great buy. So these are a great first radio for getting into ham radio. Um, these costs will cost you a little less than $30. Um, links in the video description below on where you can get these. And uh, it also has a lot of their accessories listed with it. So nice thing is these have a rechargeable battery. Uh, these batteries actually last quite a long time. Um, whereas these two radios run on double A's. Now you can run rechargeables in those, 
But even so, they're going to go through batteries a lot faster than this one will. And being able to recharge the batteries is just an excellent thing. Um, and there's ways to recharge those off grid. That's another thing we'll talk about here in a future video. Um, but these are actually capable, real, very capable radios. They'll do about the same power level as this one. Um, and they'll transmit. They will transmit in some of the same bands, but it's important you know what you're doing. Um, there's areas these are allowed and aren't not allowed to transmit on. And again, some of those areas like pan bands do require you to have a amateur radio license, which is another thing we're going to talk about in a future video, how to get your license and uh, what are the benefits are there. So this will actually get you access to two hand bands for $30. And that's a, that's a phenomenal value. So I highly recommend these. Again, the links are in the description below. And then over here, um, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this. This is a handheld CB. Um, these are kind of handy to have if you don't have a CB in your vehicle. The downside, well, obviously part of it, it's hard to get the battery door off, uh, especially when you're reaching out here under the camera to do it. These run on AA batteries. Um, it takes nine of them, I believe, it might be eight. I don't remember without taking all these out uses a lot of batteries. If you're not running rechargeables in these, these things will eat batteries alive. But there's a lot of people that have these, a lot of your truckers have these, a lot of emergency services have these mounted in the patrol cars um, for your sheriffs and your local police department may still have them in their cars. These are pretty handy radios for getting road reports. If you're traveling, uh, wintertime, that kind of stuff, um, the truckers end up talking a lot about chain restrictions and what how the roads are so they can be real handy for that uh, but again they eat a lot of batteries um, you can feed them with 12 volts direct um, with a cigarette lighter adapter you plug into your car or plug into your external battery bank um, so there's ways to get these off of the the internal batteries which is really helpful but these are a handy ha uh, radio to have as well uh, i will get a, a link for these in the description below as well um, but that one is not going to be quite as useful as, as like one of these Baofeng radios. So highly recommend get this one first. If you want some extra communication capabilities, uh, look at one of the handheld portable CBs. These run the full four watts, um, just like a mobile CB would. So with the right antenna, these will perform about the same as your installed mobile CB would in a vehicle. Uh, but again, it's it's all dependent on what antenna you are running. So in a nutshell, guys, that's some basic radios. There are more radios out there. But again, a lot of the high end, like the amateur radio handhelds, uh, the ICOM, Kenwood, Yesu, those are all excellent, excellent brands. I love my Yesu equipment. But a radio that's fairly equivalent to this, it'll do a whole lot more, has more features, but you're going to pay about 12 times as much. Um, depending on which one you get. So these are 30 bucks. The ham handhelds start a little over $100 and go all the way up to about 500 bucks, depending on what, uh, what the radio is capable of and what it'll do. Now, granted, you get a lot for that $500, but as far as value, entry-level radio, these are a very good option for people. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and feel free to share this video with your friends. As usual, links to items we talked about are in the description below.